Hello, how are you doing? Welcome back to the channel. Wayne Pivak needs to be removed as Wales head coach. Gives me no pleasure to say that, but I think that is the reality of where this Welsh side currently are. So in this video, I'm going to get into all of that, explain why I think it's time that they moved on from Wayne Pivak, talk about the whole issues in the structure of Welsh rugby, and also look at whether Warren Gatland is the answer. That is the reports in a lot of the papers over here in the UK. If you are new to the channel, please subscribe, like the video, and also drop a comment down below. What do you think? Do you think it is time that Wales moved on from Wayne Pivak, or would you give him until the end of the World Cup next year? Let me know down below. All right, let's get into it. So first of all, the first thing to mention, and I actually said this in my review of the Australia game, which I posted on Sunday, was that I had no pleasure in saying this and in talking about someone losing their job, because that is the reality of the situation. We can get a bit numb to it, I think, when it comes to sport, because we're so used to it being uh, driven by results. And if people aren't getting the results, they lose their jobs. But this is a person involved Wayne Pivak, I think, has always come across as a pretty decent bloke during his time as head coach of Wales. And if you watch that game against Australia at the weekend, when they conceded the final try, which gave Australia the lead and completed that comeback, the camera panned to Wayne Pivak in the coach's box. And he looked absolutely gutted, I thought. It kind of broke your heart kind of watching him because he knew what that try meant or what that try potentially meant in terms of his job. If Wales get the job done against Australia, I don't think we're having this conversation. I think whilst things wouldn't be great, they would say, look, they got themselves back to winning ways at the end of the autumn. It's something they can move forward. Let's see how he does in the Six Nations. But after that defeat, followed by a defeat to Georgia, it's just not good enough, I think, from a Welsh perspective. And I think it is time that they moved on from him. So why in terms of do I think well, Pivak needs to go? Well, you look at the results. What is it? Three wins in 12 games this year. Just they have really haven't performed well. In fact, throughout the whole Pivak era, I know they won a Six Nations, but that was a Six Nations behind closed doors, which I think does put a caveat in there. It does put an asterisk by that result. It's the same for a lot of other sports, but you take the fans away, particularly from the Six Nations, that changes things. Also in that Six Nations, they came up against a lot of sides who were getting red cards. It was just one of those times where it happened to be the case that Wales kept coming up against sides who got red cards. They had a man advantage, etc., etc. But all the rest of the time, it's been very, very hit and miss. There have been some good results for Wales. They beat South Africa in the second test in the summer, their first ever victory in South Africa. I know, personally, I think that also that should have a slight asterisk by it because they came up against the South Africa side that made, I think it was 14 changes from the first test. It was nowhere near a first string South Africa side, but they got the victory. There was the win against Scotland in the Six Nations when everyone thought that they would get beaten. So there have been moments, but you look at the overall body of work of Wayne Pivak's Wales, and unfortunately, I don't think it's been good enough. But more alarmingly, perhaps even than just the bare statistics of the result, is the manner of the last couple of defeats. I was doing commentary on radio for the Georgia game, and Wales should have put that game away a long, long time ago. They didn't. It kept close. And then in the final 20, they lost momentum. They lost control of that game, and they weren't able to wrestle it back, which you feel they should have been able to do because there's still a lot of experienced players in that squad whether it be Ken Owens, Justin Tipperick, George North etc and it was the same story against Australia again at the weekend. Wales by anyone's estimation had that game won. Autumn finished 2022 done thank you very much let's finish with a win and they completely lost control of it. Justin Tipperick tripped someone up as the captain. Stupid thing to do. Got a yellow card. That opened the floodgates. That opened the opportunity for an Australian comeback. And you just felt like Wales couldn't deal with that. They couldn't deal with the the onslaught that Australia brought them. There's also been an element of inconsistency in selection. Now, this isn't entirely down to Pivak's fault. I think there is an issue in some positions, particularly that Welsh front row. I don't think it's particularly strong. You look at the props available to them. They got absolutely destroyed by Georgia the week before towards the end of the game in the scrum. They eventually started losing that battle to Australia as well. So I'm not sure they quite have the firepower there to come off the bench, which is a major, major issue for Pivak. But I think he struggled to get the balance between between new players coming through and what to do with the old guard, Alan Wynne Jones and Justin Tipperick and players like this. And it, it seems like a, a muddled team to me at the moment. You look at the back row, that's been chopped and changed this uh, this autumn. I think in the second row in Adam Beard and Will Rowlands, they actually do have two guys. Those are probably their first choice, but Will Rowlands picked up an injury 
So there's been all sorts of things like this that I just, I look at this Welsh team and I'm not quite sure about the balance of it at the moment. I mean, to his credit, he's brought Lewis Rees Samet through since the last World Cup. Uh, Nick Tompkins as well. Um, we've seen Jack Morgan, who had a brilliant autumn, actually, amongst all the chaos, has done really, really well. And Rio Dyer has come through as well this autumn. So there's been players coming through, but how that's balanced with the older players in the team, it feels like it's an ageing Welsh squad. Another big, big caveat to this, though, and you have to give Pivac credit where it's due, is this is not entirely his fault. There are major issues with the Welsh Rugby Union and with the whole structure of Welsh rugby. Last week, Sam Warburton in The Times had a brilliant article on it. The former Wales captain, British and Irish Lions captain, wrote really, really well on this, and I would encourage you to go and find that article. Um, but ultimately, you've got a situation, as far as I can understand it, where you still have a number of members of the community game on the board of the Welsh Rugby Union. And so therefore they are making high level rugby professional decisions that impact the game at the very, very top level. And the suggestion from what I can tell seems to be that there needs to be more of a separation between the community game and the professional arm of the WRU. So there are major issues at the moment. I think Warren Gatlin for a long time was able to paper over the cracks, partly because they had a real golden generation and partly because he was able to get an awful lot out of those players and out of that team. So it's not entirely PVAC's fault. The whole system is an issue. Um, but despite that, I think given the results, given what the team are producing on the pitch, it is probably still right that, that PVAC does go. Because I think there are a lot of high level coaches out there that would be able to get an immediate bounce out of this team ahead of that World Cup. I don't think they're as bad a side as they're currently playing. In the papers, the reports are that Warren Gatland is going to be the guy, that there are conversations happening about Gatland returning on a short stint, taking them up through that World Cup in France next year. My gut instinct with this is never go back. And I think Gatland has had such a legacy with Wales. He did such an unbelievable job that I'm not comfortable with him going back in terms of what it could potentially do to tarnish that legacy. Now, maybe it won't. Maybe he'll be absolutely fine. He'll pick up where he left off. This Wales team will have a bounce. There'll be much more contenders in the Six Nations again. They'll have a good account of themselves at the World Cup and it'll all be, all be fine. And I think he could be a stopgap until the Rugby World Cup, but I don't think it would be more than that. I don't think we'd be seeing them employ Warren Gatland further than the World Cup next year. I think it would be, what would it, an eight, nine, ten month sort of contract before they then appoint a coach to take them through the next four years. Um, but I would like to see them go, if they are going to replace Wayne Pivak, I'd like to see them go for a longer term option now. So someone that can take them through to the World Cup and then beyond, have a bit more planning, a bit more long term vision rather than just someone as a stopgap. But I can understand the clamour in Wales for Warren Gatton. I can understand why the fans want him back. There's something about it for me that I just feel a little uneasy because it's not just down to the coach. Gatland or a lot of high level coaches out there will, will get a bounce out of this team, but you still have to contend with all the issues in the game, with the community game, with the provincial sides who are struggling. PVAC's been complaining about the quality of the fitness of the players when he has them on Welsh camp. All that stuff is still going to be there. So I'd like to see someone come in that could be more a longer term vision and hopefully the WIU, hopefully they can start getting their house in order, but it doesn't seem like it at the moment. So those are my thoughts on it. Let me finish with the thing I started with once again. I feel desperately sorry for Wayne Pivak in this thing. He seems like a really good bloke. I was gutted for him at the end of the Australia game, just in so much as you could tell how devastated he was because he knew what it might mean. But unfortunately, I do think it is time that Wales moved on from Wayne Pivak and that he doesn't see them through into the World Cup next year. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. It's a big, big talking point in terms of Welsh rugby. Like the video and also subscribe to the channel. Been absolutely buzzing with the new subscribers and views that we've got recently and over the last couple of weeks on the channel. I do really, really appreciate it. So any help you can give me, please do. All right, I'll see you in the next one.